So, hello, Maximiliano. Hi there. So, uh, the next presentation is uh, uh, PhosphoGIS based on a high frequency and interoperable lake water quality monitor system with Maximiliano Canata for Italy. Uh, Maximiliano is professor as teacher of geomatics and the Institute of the Earth in Science for La Escuela Universitaria Profesionale de la Svizzera Italiana. I think my <laughs> Italian is more. <laughs> Very good. So the University of the Applied Science in Art of the South of the science, uh, Switzerland. Né? Yeah. So Maximiliano, I, I tried a lot of for the next for, for GIS. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Maximiliano, uh, the stage is all yours uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you, uh, describe you a project that we are running that is related to the high frequency monitoring of uh, water quality parameters of a lake. And uh, this is an interreg project. It means that uh, it is uh, a project between uh, Italy and Switzerland. In fact, uh, one of the aspects that we want to approach is that there are uh, three different lakes that are uh, really close in the area but, and, uh, and that are uh, monitored from uh, different uh, institutions and also the national authorities that uh, uh, define the policies are different because one is Switzerland and one is in Italy and uh, the idea was to try to homogenize the monitoring to have a comparative uh, potential between the state of the lakes from the water quality uh, point of view since uh, most of them are interconnected from hydrological point of view and then the second thing was uh, try to make some uh, sort of innovation and bring some uh, uh, changing uh, in uh, in the management aspects of these uh, water quality and uh, yeah this is uh, the topic so it's about uh, the management and the monitoring of uh, the lake ecosystem so of water quality and also of the ecosystems one of the things that uh, we have seen in uh, this uh, sector related to limnology so water quality and ecosystem of lakes is that uh, uh, they are still uh, in a phase where they are moving uh, in digitization and they are trying to move into the digitalization, but this is not really happening so fast. So the real topics there is also how we can move into this digital transformation in the in the lake ecosystem uh, management. So try not not just to use digital data, but uh, to uh, extend the concept with the sort of digital twins of the lakes and try to use it as a reactive system that can provide uh, insight uh, to the managers to adapt uh, and use a more adaptive policy in uh, the management of the water rather than just uh, uh, passive and uh, definite. So we have to deal with two somehow different but really linked the topics one is about the data management and the other one is about the environmental monitoring and the issue with the digital transformation has different reasons and uh, what we have noticed uh, like in most of the cases we have disconnected system uh, that are managing spreadsheet and uh, people are not used uh, to uh, take advantage of the new technologies and uh, but we see that there is a lot of opportunities and uh, we try to push uh, this uh, this digital transformation uh, where we start from we start from uh, monitoring campaigns that are run uh, in this case we are I'm talking about the Lake Lugano which is in Switzerland which is monitored uh, by my institutes, my colleagues, limnologists, and they go once a month with a boat on the lake. Uh, they use some sensor uh, that uh, they put in the water, then they perform some measurements, manual driven, uh, what and sensor performed. 
uh, they collect some uh, water samples that goes to laboratories and then we get back some analysis from the labs and this is a regular campaigns over the year once a month uh, and we have data for more than 50 years uh, like this of course you see that uh, in these ways it's almost impossible to react to uh, different uh, phenomena that can happen in the lake uh, with the short and uh, time interval rather than uh, one uh, a single uh, uh, month there are different uh, options that are this new solution one of them is the remote sensing but i'm not talking about this this part has been uh, addressed by uh, the polytechnic of milan and cnr of milan while i'm talking with uh, the automatic high frequency monitoring system which is basically a sort of uh, weather station that monitor the water quality in the lake what is the state of the art in this uh, high frequency monitoring system? Uh, we can bring a couple of uh, two examples. One is on the left side is uh, Lexplora, is a floating laboratory on the Lake of Geneva in Switzerland. This is uh, uh, like a unique uh, research opportunities because this is uh, very big, uh, very rich in sensor and uh, things like that, and it's very expensive. Uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, certainly more than uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, US dollars. On the other side, there is also some experiments of a smaller uh, buoy system, a lower cost, uh, is more oriented to specific near needs and uh, is more a customized solution uh, done by uh, Palanza. And from the data management side, we have uh, we are uh, dealing with data that are uh, currently managed uh, in uh, Access database or uh, multi DB file, uh, Excel file, text file, and etc. And there is really a lack of uniformity in data formats, ontology, interoperability. Uh, there is uh, error prone processes in copy and paste and that integrity is not guaranteed and there is also data latency between sa uh, sampling and then uh, data availability so there is a lot of potential that we could try to uh, exploit uh, using uh, in integrating some with some interoperability standards and metadata schemas and adding fair principles why we are still there there are a lot of uh, answer possible answer and uh, you see here probably is a matter of cost also but also a matter of digital expertise of the personnel and uh, also a sort of resistance to change in uh, uh, the usual let's say resistance that uh, you can have in uh, the digitalization process our question is uh, how can we somehow uh, make the management benefit of these advantages of the digitalization? And uh, can we really integrate a fully open software solution that can address such a problems and foster the digitalization of the water sector? And how the system might help in taking the local effects, for example, of climate change? So it's not just about uh, monitoring, but then also enabling the usage of this uh, monitoring to uh, tackling some, uh, for example, climate changes efforts. We proposed uh, an open uh, integrated system with uh, uh, starting from data sources, some pre-processing, then some storage in database, and then uh, offering as a standard services. And we wanted to make this uh, everything uh, integrated and automated so that uh, also, the limnologists can easily access the data and elaborate and take decision. The project apply the experimental testing method, so it's quite straightforward. We designate a case study, we elaborate the state of the art, we design a solution, we develop the solution, and then we uh, make some testing, preliminary testing of the solution, and then deploy in the fields, and then we start to analyze what we can get from this solution and uh, uh, evaluate the results finally now we are uh, in the in the stage uh, you can see in the box uh, 
at the end of the second year and beginning of third year of projects. So we have deployed the system and we are in the phase of uh, developing that analysis and taking some preliminary conclusions. The methods uh, that we wanted to access uh, as an example for climate change is uh, how can we estimate the primary production of the lake, uh, which is the production of uh, primary uh, organic. And uh, this has been uh, generally estimated with these uh, monthly campaigns uh, using the C14 uh, isotope. And uh, this is a expensive procedures. This is somehow dangerous because it is also radioactive, etc. And uh, as I said, you have 12 values here. So we, st we started to look uh, into literature and we find out that there are modern uh, systems and uh, uh, models that can make an estimate, automatic estimate uh, based on sensor measurements. We start to design the architecture and uh, we combine several uh, open source uh, uh, technologies. Uh, is source for the data management, which is uh, an OGC uh, software, Grafana for the plotting, MQTT broker for accessing data from the sensor, and then a key clock for authorizations and access uh, management. Uh, and then we implement uh, some, uh, also some uh, new configuration services. Uh, uh, and this is from the software point of view. So the data management, uh, but then we have also the monitoring part and we design uh, a system fully open based on Raspberry Pi and that use NB-IoT as a communication protocol and uh, that connect with the uh, standard sensor that you find on the markets. And uh, we designed this uh, system uh, in, with the idea to be uh, replicable as much as possible. The approach in the data management that we follow is a two-tier data flow. So some of the, the data collection is uh, on the edge at the, let's say, buoy or, or the lake platform. You, I, I will uh, show you later some pictures. And then uh, there is uh, on the right side in green, uh, the server side. So uh, that are collected locally, but uh, are directly at the edge checked for their validity before being inserted in the, into the ESOS instance. So at the edge on the buoy, at the sensor side, we have uh, a, an installation of the software that manage the data so that we can take advantage of the services, we can access data with the standard formats, and we can also, can also use their uh, integrated uh, data quality assessment. So then data from the raw data, we perform some aggregation and data check before transmitted. So when data arrive at the server, data are already uh, pre-flagged uh, with some quality index that we can decide how to use then this data. When they arrive at the server, of course, they are still uh, <coughs> available for using the standard, uh, the sensor observation service standard for validation of the data, for generating reports, analysis, and alerts and forecasting, et cetera. So somehow we move part uh, of the data quality on the edge side. We have implemented uh, a, a dashboard, and in particular, we have uh, developed uh, uh, some uh, data imported for uh, historical data, because one of the things that we wanted to do also is uh, to put together the new data sources that comes from the sensor with uh, the traditional methods so that we can combine the data and make uh, take out the maximum out of that. So we have, have implemented some uh, automatic importer for the data that has been used. Uh, and uh, we have also, together with the other partners, we have defined uh, what is uh, a common ontology of the parameters and uh, uh, uniformize the unit of measures of uh, the different uh, uh, indicators and parameters that we want to access. As you can see, we have different type of data in, uh, in, the, in the data management system, which is a repeat based on resource. You have uh, in the box uh, the data from the sensor in the fields. So 
these are uh, they are real time data but you still also have uh, 50 years of data for example from 72 to, to 2020 for a different uh, uh, type of uh, sensor and uh, uh, monitoring with the dashboard taking advantage of grafana you can have different plotting of the data of uh, historical selecting and filtering by location filtering by uh, time uh, with the uh, server property and etc you can visualize the profiles with the recently added uh, uh, new feature in ISOS to manage profile data and uh, also you have a dashboard so you can also see time series of a single sensor in a given depth for example and see the different properties that has been uh, measured and then you can activate some comparison and uh, evaluation of the data so now we have the data, we have the sensor in the field, collecting data, historical data, and then we have to implement some processes and so some um, modeling of this data. So we have implemented uh, an asynchronous process. So within ESOS, we have created, uh, extended ESOS to create uh, uh, these asynchronous processes. So you can define a sort of a new procedure, so a sort of new sensor and new values that uh, is being calculated every time the original data uh, source uh, get new data. So it's quite easy. You select the process that you want to simulate. You select uh, the sensor or the data that you use as an input. Every time your input data get uh, some new data, then uh, asynchronously these process are uh, activated and uh, this is a reactive uh, approach uh, to make the compilation. This is uh, uh, the small platform that we have deployed on the fields. Uh, you can see there is uh, a, a solar, uh, a solar uh, panel that provides uh, energy with a battery unit for backup and then the main unit with the uh, Raspberry Pi in the center, some solar regulator, voltage regulator, and etc. And uh, I repeat, all of this uh, is built up uh, using uh, <coughs> commonly uh, fundable uh, pieces on the market uh, and uh, is fully replicable. So everything is uh, open. <clears throat> Together with the deployment, we started to keep the maintenance look back because one of the things that we want to see is uh, how after running the system uh, in production, how does it work? Uh, does it break often? Uh, do we lose data? And uh, how the, the system performs? So we had some small issues, but so far uh, we are uh, quite happy with the system. We are collecting uh, a good number of values. We did some uh, quality control in post-processing using two tests, a plausible value and a step test to verify if uh, the data makes sense uh, and uh, then we implemented some uh, algorithms uh, to estimate this lake metabolism this primary production as i said and this can be estimated uh, uh, from observation of oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen uh, in the water uh, at different times uh, and we can make estimation of uh, the gross primary production because uh, during the name uh, the night uh, the respiration uh, uh, it's not uh, active, so you can do some differences between night and day and estimate. Uh, I don't go into detail of the algorithms and uh, the equation of the, the, the model that we have implemented and uh, integrated in the system. Um, these are some preliminary results uh, of uh, the data quality for the data completeness, for example. We can see that 98% of the data are, uh, are available. So it means that uh, we have lost some uh, data, but just uh, a few data in this uh, almost, uh, uh, this uh, estimation was done by the eight month of, uh, from January to August 21. And this is also from some specific parameter for oxygen that we want to use. We go also to 199%. You see that do these two QI 101 and 103 are these two different quality index that relates to the uh, data quality. 
from the solar panel point of view, you can see that the system is uh, well dimensioned uh, and we have uh, still uh, space uh, to add a new uh, sensor uh, uh, that consume energy. This, uh, in fact, uh, we plan to extend uh, the sensor on the platform, adding uh, other uh, uh, sensor to monitor the chlorophyll and uh, to detect uh, algal blooms in the lake, for example. These are some time series uh, uh, that are the inputs for the primary production estimation. So we have the dissolved oxygen, a different depth, and uh, you can see that we have uh, continuous data and uh, there is uh, an effect of wind spin and temperature and solar irradiation, of course. The preliminary result of the estimation of uh, primary production is quite uh, uh, positive. In fact, we can detect uh, a different trend from the seasonal trend that we want to expect from the winter and starting from the <coughs> from the uh, summertime uh, where uh, primary production increase and also comparing the values in the table from historical data that has been monitored with the other system monitoring uh, the C14 uh, are, uh, are in, in line. So uh, we are quite confident that we can uh, somehow change the methodology to monitoring the primary production, having less invasive, less expensive methodology and having uh, high frequency data. And this is somehow the point where we wanted to reach uh, is uh, how you, you can use uh, all this open stuff uh, and uh, all this dig new digital technology to improve uh, the way you are doing and uh, uh, have new information to uh, to solve the challenges. So I'm coming to the conclusion and the system is working without uh, any major issues. Uh, the cost of the system is about 15,000. This really depends, you have to think that uh, Almost 10,000 is uh, about uh, the mooring of the platform. And uh, so the, the cost of the sensor is 5,000. In fact, we are thinking for the future, try to miniaturize the system and uh, bring it to the buoy. So we have new integrated system, which collect data and put together all the data of the limino limnological sector and make them really available for analysis. Um, the data are available using a standard, the sensor observation service, uh, and uh, we have new digital exploitation of data. So we are creating new digital value. For uh, the next uh, year, we have uh, to evaluate more in detail the cost of the maintenance of the system. We have to deploy more system more sensor and of course we are continuing to enhance the system in general like from the software point of view and from the hardware point of view and thank you for the attention so thank you maximiliano uh, we have uh, uh, at the moment uh, one question and uh, i think uh, you you respond the first part of the question but uh, <coughs> let let no let us know uh, if it, uh, no no let let you know see if you have uh, some uh, considerations about this uh, uh, in general terms what is the cost of the infrastructure for monetary i think you ju you just uh, answer this the, this part so uh, there is some limitation for hip replication in another ecosystem such a tropical lagoon or reservoirs so it, it's some limitations about well in, okay so from the cost as you said i've already answered more or less is fifteen thousand the cost but uh, really ten thousand about it was about the construction of the platform why we did select the platform because we wanted to deploy more and more sensor to for uh, testing more for a scientific approach and being able to have a site where we can perform more uh, development and testing if i would go in production i would try to miniaturize the system but 
in general, there is no limitation for the replication in other ecosystem. And uh, tropical lagoon, probably you will have more uh, production of algae. So the maintenance of the sensor should be more, uh, more often with respect to the alpine lake. But uh, in general, there is no restriction. The sensors are widely available, uh, software and everything is, uh, is there. Okay, we have uh, some questions here. Uh, is the public access to, of the data in this case you present? Okay, all the data, uh, not so far. We are implementing a web interface for the users because uh, such a kind of data are quite, uh, let's say, academic. So uh, are uh, available for the general for uh, the network of uh, academic person and experts, but uh, the administration didn't want to open up everything to the public because this information may be misunderstood and can generate some alarmism. For example, for uh, production uh, high production of algae in the lakes or things like that. So uh, we are deploy, developing uh, a web interface to show general parameters, which uh, are uh, easy to understand by citizens, but uh, the data are available on request. Okay, the next question is how you transmit the data from the field? MBIoT, the answer is. We tested with LoRa, we started with LoRa protocol, but then soon we realized that uh, the bandwidth uh, is too, uh, uh, too low to transmit uh, such amount of data. So we migrated to MBIoT now. Okay, Ian, the, the last question is, what kind of the signal you get for the sensors? Uh, mostly 0, 0.5 volt <laughs> digital output, yeah. Okay, so let me see if you have another questions. No, oh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Maximiliano, for your presentation. Uh, we have a lot of, we have uh, some of, uh, hello for, for your friends here. <laughs> so um, your time is up. I want to make a short uh, 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 pause for, uh, drink a water or drink a tea, and we go back with uh, Willie Gautier in the next session of the this this morning. Thank you, uh, Maximiliano. We will see you soon in the Venerless in the social gathering in Phosphor GIS mapping. Okay, thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.